would you like to take a trip out onto the waters of Alaska's Kachemak Bay in pursuit of a feisty fish this area is famous for, Pacific halibut? Homer, Alaska is known as the halibut fishing capital of the world. But why? Why does Homer get that trophy? And what makes this fish so special anyway? And particularly, how will we make out today? Will we get lucky and catch a few, or will we strike out? Jump aboard as we hit the seas with our friends and find out with us. So we are on Alaska's Sterling Highway, headed to a side of the Kenai Peninsula we have never been to before. The Kenai Peninsula is a truly spectacular place. 25,000 square miles of beauty jutting out from the coast of South Central Alaska. Despite its sheer size, it has remarkably few highways. We spent our winter here in Seward at the very end of the Seward Highway. Now we are on the Sterling Highway, which stretches 138 miles from Turn Lake to the Homer Spit. And if you're wondering what the heck the Homer Spit is, you'll see. The Kenai River flows to our right. Not too far in the future, this river will be teeming with salmon. But they're not running just yet. The Kenai Mountains tower around us, still laden with snow after the long winter. And quite suddenly, and almost without warning, we drop down into low, broad flatlands. Did you notice how the peninsula seems split in two? Rugged mountains on one side, flatlands on the other, and a striking contrast between the two? Hmm, curious. We arrive in the town of Kenai, where we will spend the night tucked right up against the Cook Inlet. Our new neighbors seem a little curious at our arrival. In no time, they will be enjoying a salmon feast here on the beach, right where the Kenai River meets the sea. The sunsets here are vivid, and we take this one in before turning in for the night. Though it's not much of a night. As you can see, nighttime in Alaska in the summer doesn't last too long. The sky stays in a state of dusk, and the sun barely dips below the horizon before popping up again. It's pretty trippy. Today is the day and we're heading to Homer. Our friend Dave is driving and all three of us are on our way to meet our other friend Matt, whose boat is docked at the Homer Spit. The trip is beautiful. Most of the drive hugs the coastline with spectacular views of the Cook Inlet to the west. Stretching about 220 miles long and narrowing from 80 to 9 miles wide, the importance of this inlet cannot be overstated. Every year, millions of salmon traverse these waters on their way to spawn in the rivers and streams that flow into the inlet. It is also home to a unique and endangered population of beluga whales that live here and only here. And of course, there's the halibut. The Sterling Highway ends in Homer, right where the Ketchumac Bay cuts a watery wedge into the Kenai Peninsula. Across the bay, the striking mountains of Ketchumac Bay State Park rise majestically into the sky. See that little sliver of land jutting out straight into Ketchumac Bay? That is the Homer Spit. It's actually quite fascinating, and it's where we're headed now. The Homer Spit is a thin 4.5 mile gravel bar reaching straight into the heart of the bay. It formed 14 to 15,000 years ago as the terminal moraine of a glacier. Remember how we talked about those in episode nine? Now the forces of erosion should have taken this away long ago, so there's something else going on here as well. Every year, about 800,000 cubic yards of sediments erode off the coastal bluffs leading up to Homer. Then currents bring them right along the spit. Those sediments build up the spit in the summer, and then winter storms erode them away. This is also where the Homer port and harbor is located, and where our halibut fishing adventure begins. It's amazing to be out here. It is a spectacular day. We're gonna go out fishing for halibut. Wish us luck.
Do you ever dream about selling it all and living on a boat? Going where your whims might take you, whether it be the icy cold waters of Alaska or the balmy seas of the Caribbean? We love our tiny home on wheels and wouldn't trade our project to travel Alaska to Argentina in our Bobby bus for anything. But still, it's fun to think about hitting the high seas, especially when seeing a space like this. The mind begins to go wild thinking of all the possibilities and all the adventures one could have. We pinch ourselves that we are here, a pair of lucky stowaways on this mini adventure, as Matt and Dave expertly navigate us out of the slip and through the harbor. There's something about being on a boat, getting ready to head out into open waters that is so exhilarating. The smell of salt water and the cries of seagulls fill the air. Gentle waves lap at the side of the boat while bright sunshine and a light wind seem to call us out to the bay. Every year, more fishing charters set sail from this harbor than any other port in Alaska. The sheer number of charters is one reason for Homer's stake to the halibut capital claim. But commercial fishing numbers also play a part. In 2021 alone, over 3 million pounds of commercially harvested halibut were unloaded in this port. A port that, by the way, has to have its entrance dredged every year due to that annual buildup of sediments from the bluffs. Finally, we enter the open waters of Ketchamek Bay, and what a glorious day it is. We are reminded of a revelation from episode two, that Alaska is unimaginably vast and how the majority of its territory is cut off from the road system. The mountains gracing every horizon seem to emphasize this point. Everything we see can only be accessed by boat, bush plane, or the most ambitious of hikers. So why is Homer dubbed the halibut fishing capital of the world? Why is this place in particular such a great place to try your luck at the Big Catch? This is the range of the internationally managed Pacific halibut fishery. No one names halibut as one of the most valuable commercial and recreational fishery resources in the North Pacific Ocean. Again, in 2021 alone, 25 million pounds of Pacific halibut was commercially harvested, valued at $120 million, and 95% of that catch came from Alaska. Two fishery management areas are particularly abundant, with especially high harvests around Kodiak Island and the Kenai Peninsula. Between 2015 and 2022, the top three ports for harvested halibut were Homer, Kodiak, and Seward, with Homer taking the top spot. Throw in how easy it is to get to Homer, as well as its dominance in the charter fishing industry, and there you have it, the halibut fishing capital of the world. So now the really big question is, how will we make out today? What is it? Herring. Herring. Oh. Little anchovies. All right, now spin it. All right, hold it right there. Got it. Yeah, sliders for the hook. Half a herring or? Yeah, I think we start there and cast out four times and catch four fish and then we'll start using whole ones. Awesome. <laughs> yummy, yummy. All right, and then to let them down.
Congratulations, my love. As you can see, halibut are feisty. They are strong fighters and aggressive predators in their world. They are bottom dwellers, so the hook and bait is lowered all the way to the seafloor, and they love herring. Native Alaskans developed an ingenious wooden hook that masterfully caught halibut and also ensured sustainability of the species by only catching fish of a certain size. Over time, the hooks evolved to include intricate carvings, infusing a spiritual dimension into their utilitarian purpose. They are deeply symbolic, serving as a powerful connection between Native Alaskans and their ancestral traditions. Yep, got it. Hey, look at that. <laughs> wow. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> Todd, congratulations. As you can see, the team made out pretty good today. We'll be heading back home with some halibut and even a couple lingcod. We're heading back to port and Matt starts doing some pretty impressive processing en route. You know you have some sea legs on you when you can wield a knife this sharp while on a slightly bumpy ride. And if you've never seen halibut before, you might be super curious about this fish. There's a lot going on here to be curious about. For starters, halibut are flatfish. Flatfish are the most asymmetrically shaped vertebrate on Earth. Before six months, they actually swim upright with each eye on either side of the head. But after that, things start getting weird. One eye migrates over to the other side of the body, they begin swimming sideways, and their mouth kind of stays put. It makes for a pretty bizarre look. Jose Luis jokes that they kind of look like Picasso designed a fish. Their coloring makes them better predators and more elusive prey. From above, they resemble the seafloor. From below, they blend in with the bright surface sunlight. Now this is really interesting. Most halibut are right-eyed, with both eyes on the right side of the body. But one in 20,000 halibut is left-eyed, with both eyes on the left side. And now if you think this is a big fish, check out this one. Pacific halibut can grow up to eight feet long and live up to 55 years. Alaska is known for its historic catches. In fact, the world record for largest Pacific halibut ever was caught near Dutch Harbor and weighed in at 459 pounds. It was a successful day and we head back to Homer. Though the day isn't done yet, there's one more step to this whole process. In the meantime, we soak up this sunshine. Here on the coast, rain is pretty common, so when beautiful days like this come along, you take them. All around us, sea otters seem to be on exactly the same page, bobbing along in groups, nibbling on the latest catch, or just snoozing lazily in the sun. Honestly, we're pinching ourselves that this day even happened. Plans were made to come out here just a few days ago, on a whim while hanging out, and we're so grateful our friends took the time to welcome us in and bring us along.
And now to package and store away all that fish. Look at all the fish. We are astounded by how much meat came off those fish. It's enough to fill a normal fridge freezer, and from what we hear, this meat is good. It's mild and sweet. Already Jose Luis has some ideas. We're at our friends Dave and Jane's fish camp in Kenai. You're seeing shades of the future here, as we'll be back later this summer for the sockeye salmon run. If this is what a single day of halibut fishing looks like, What's it going to look like when 50,000 reds come coursing up the river in a single day? It seems the only thing left to do is give it a whirl. Jose is bringing together two paths of our journey right now. Two years ago, we were bouncing around Baja and we discovered the best fish taco breading. In Spanish, we call it capeador. We may have stashed some away. So what do you do when you have a precious stash of capeador and then catch some lingcod in Alaska? You make some fancy fish sticks a la bus style. We bid our friends farewell, for now. We'll be back in no time for the salmon run and that's an experience you will not want to miss. We head back towards the mountainous side of the Kenai Peninsula and hey, there's one mystery that still remains. Why that huge contrast between the Kenai Mountains and the Kenai Lowlands? Remember how in episode nine we talked about how Alaska is a geological playground of fault systems? Well, one of them is the Border Ranges Fault. And it passes, you guessed it, right along here. Its movement created this strikingly obvious contrast between the mountainous regions of the Kenai Peninsula and its lowlands. Neat, huh? So we make it to one of our favorite parking spots on the Kenai Peninsula, Turn Lake. And it's here that we take a moment of pause. Summer is about to kick into full swing and some special guests are going to be joining us on the bus. We're really excited about it and we have a lot of video editing to do before they arrive. So we settle into work and just live with the rhythms of life for a little bit, surrounded by the beauty of Turn Lake and the Kenai Mountains. and we get two videos finished. Maybe you've seen them. And we are about to be joined by two surprise guests joining us for the next adventure next time on Aren't We There Yet. Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Aren't We There Yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.